Good evening, I'm Rapstein with your Spider ETF wrap-up, and this wrap-up is for the evening of Wednesday, the 27th of April, 2022. Interesting day. You know, tomorrow we're going to get, I think it's the Apple earnings come out, so that'll be another one that we watch. Uh, I did make a change today on the lead markets that we're going to do. I appreciate everybody writing that. I had a lot of names. Some of them are so interesting. I may do a little change in the lineup here. I think some of them do work on it. Uh, for a lot of them that you want, uh, people, if you're a subscriber of mine, I probably cover 90% or more of what I was asked to cover in my morning subscriber video. Come on. It doesn't take much money. You see it, you'll get a lot more in-depth information. I'm covering what you want. And by the way, as a subscriber, when you get that, if you write me and you, hey, Ira, can you send me a chart on what you think of this? I do that. So during the days, I'll make time. I create it. And sometimes I do a small video, a one-minute video, a 30-second video, review the chart in depth for you. And I just for you. I sent it right back to you. So I devote a certain amount of time each day for that. And uh, people seem to really like it. So FXB is still getting hit, you know, their numbers, okay, where are they? Twitter, notice how the market keeps sinking away. I'm reading a lot of people that don't think this deal is going to go through for whatever reasons. I don't know. There's a billion dollars from what I understand it on the table. If either party walks away from the deal, that's an awful lot of money. I don't care for the richest man in the world. That's an awful lot of money. The problem is the, I saw the ECB, the European, uh, not ECB, the European Union come out and they're making it very clear, very clear. I saw the interview on Bloomberg today today that uh, Mr. Musk, with all the freedom of talk he wants, he's got to abide by their rules or else. So I think people are overreacting. I don't think he's going to be knocking people off, but I do think that a social media platform of this size does has obligations that they'll follow. And I don't think he's ever said he wouldn't do those obligations. You build cars, you got to follow what the rules of the road are, the different states, the different countries you're building in. I think he does a pretty good job of that, Mr. Musk. But let's go to the marketplace because this is what I thought was so interesting. One of you asked me in this first time I've seen it. The Invesco Actively Managed Exchange Traded Commodity Fund Trust. This is the daily bar chart. You know, commodities have been the one bright area of this melees that we're in. As the markets keep dropping, as uh, the market drops in front of the Fed meetings, then the Fed continuing to press interest rates. And they probably have a lot of pressing to do. But, you know, 25 3% is probably the number they're going to get to over time. In any case, this market had a bit of a washout. It's been coming back. It just had a minor correction. The last rally high was 1889. Today's high was 1869. If you take that out, you break this bit of a break in the market. That's, that's all that you're doing. I'm looking for where the market's trying to find its bearing, and it seems to be the 18-day average of closes right through here. Now, the 200 is what you're also fighting, and you get a very bullish setup if all of a sudden the 18-day average gets over the 200. Now, it's not as ideal as if you had the 18, then the 100, then the 200 under even that. That you don't have. But it's still a friendly number. This is the battleground that the market is fighting in. The Bollinger Band is definitely holding the market back. You can see that. It has a tendency, I'm looking to get over the Bollinger Band. You had, if you go back here, one, two, three, four, five, and then the market started its decline after that. So it's paying attention to the typical rules. That's what I was looking to see. When you look at slow stochastics, the momentum had been down a bit. It doesn't have a nature to embed a lot. It did it back here. I don't want to move that on you. I'm sorry. It did it back here, but I'm a little concerned with that back here, what that even means. Because by the time it was running, that's when it embedded, and it seems to have embedded right at the peak of this and coming down. So I don't yet know the nature of that market. It's the first time I've looked at that chart. In AMC, I'll stay with what I said. I think you're going to form somewhere in this area. I'm looking for a low to shape up. Am I a buyer? No. Why? Are you embedded? 
What's the strongest rule on the chart? If you haven't taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course, go to our website under research at www.irapstein.com and learn this. That's the most bearish signal you have. So as much as I'm looking for the mark at the bottom, and I still think it will, that 1415 area is certainly interesting, the lower band. When the red line gets back over 21, it'll be a signal to me that this wave of the downside, at least temporarily, has come to an end. In Apple, I was just on, literally just on, that's why I'm late tonight, with Aussie Business TV. So I was doing my interview for them, and it was live. And uh, because of the time changes, 6.40 at night here, add the hours, it's early morning there, perfect morning actually, catching all the business uh, people and so on as they're waking and are up in, in their office. And I've been saying, I think you can fall another 8 to 10%. It wouldn't surprise me. You can get to the 150 area, 145 area. Would I be pressing the Bollinger Band? You know I'd never do that. What about an embedded reading? Well, if we take a look, you know, this chart's not letting me do it. They just did an update, and I'm going to have to look and see how that all works. But you have your embedded reading. Until that's lost, you're a seller on rallies, not a buyer. You just had a bearish crossover in the chart, and you're making new lows. Disney. Same type of thing. You have your embedded reading, and notice it's just locked in. I call this the Gorilla Glue bearish part of it. It's just locked in, and it's just riding the Bollinger Band down. It ends when the red line closes over 20. Where that is, your guess is as good as your fella right next to you. XLF, this is the financial services sector. The curve yield's not the friend of the banks right now. It's that simple. If it were, it wouldn't be sitting at the 210, basically a 30 basis points. It, there's not enough money to be made in that. So this is under pressure at this point. In the industrial sector, lower highs, lower lows. Uh, the market's still acting to me like it wants to work its way to lower prices before all is said and done embedded in semiconductors. So as friendly as you would think semiconductors would be, and I was definitely in that camp for a long time back here, and I think you know that, uh, I was very friendly this market in this range looking for a rally. And when you started to fail here, I started scratching my head, why? You've got built up orders, you've got a backlog, nobody can still build because they don't have enough semiconductors, be it a car, a toaster, whatever it is, yet this market's still coming down, as it turns out. And uh, I think a lot of people are fearful that not only do they have the shortage, but the consumers pulled back. And all of a sudden you're looking at a car, maybe I don't need it. Maybe you're looking at your home and you're saying, you know, I did my improvements last year. We've been in a two year COVID thing. I don't know what I need. That could be part of what we're all dealing with. In the home builders, they're still in trouble, you can see, still in a downtrend. But let me tell you about this downtrend. You have built up demand around the world. Prices are high and interest rates are high. I mean, mortgages, take a look. We haven't seen this type of mortgage in a decade where you're at 5% on a 30-year mortgage in the United States. But as you look at how the market is, it's caught in those Bollinger Bands. So a lot of this has been built in. You're no longer up here. You're no longer sitting at 85. You're suddenly at a 60 level. So this market's taken a big hit. It's almost 25% that you've taken out of the market. That's quite a bit. The energy still look bearish. I was just reading that uh, finally some of the big boys are saying that they're going to produce more oil in the basins. Okay. So I was looking at what that means. 2% more. That's not going to do the job. So I'm not convinced that we're going to get enough oil to make a big difference. A lot of the little boys are producing, but the EIA just today released their next report. And with all the production we're doing, we're going to be less than we were. You heard me, less than we were the last report that they came out with. 12 million bar barrels a day. It, it's just not picking up. That's very important. And if you're watching, you're seeing in the EIA and the APA reports that come out each week, that the oil is building away. It's the distillates and the gasoline that you're seeing the draws in now. And that will continue and then that'll create the demand on the gasoline as you go and start drawing those stocks down. And that could be the summer bull market again. In the gold, this market just, it's a give up market. 
another failure. This is probably the most disappointing commodity of all. It's telling traders by the deep breaks, close your eyes. That's not the way a futures trader trades. And that's what they're saying. I do see support right here. The Bollinger Band at 175.95 to the 100-day average and down. If you follow my futures if, uh, here on the uh, YouTube, you see that I'm telling you you're hitting the key moving averages. This should be in the area where gold finds something of a support level. In the gold miners, if the metal's no good, what do you want with the miners? Although it's a similar chart. You've been riding the Bollinger Band. Now you're coming down. You're into this whole level of support. I look for the pros to take shorts off. Same in the copper market. This is enough. I think the market's going to find its legs. TLT. You lost the embedded reading. When you lose the reading, you don't want to be short anymore the way that I teach charting. And if you look at the futures contracts, you went up, you hit the 18-day average of closes. That's the objective here. I don't know that this can rally without the futures, but it's saying that the short side of that market, probably not the place to be temporarily. Keyword, temporarily. I do think that it will be over time. UUP. Dollars just winning by every stretch in the market that's getting annihilated on world markets is the euro currency. It's down to the 106 level. Is parity next? That is what you got to look at. I was laughing because I'm looking today at the, late in the day, I think it was Reuters had a report on how the uh, ruble is doing against the euro and it's making new highs that it hasn't made in a long time. Can you believe that? That the ruble is gaining dramatically on the euro currency. Of course, the controls on the ruble make this interesting because any player that trades in the market can't go short it uh, via the rules that Russia has put up. That would give you a lot of power. Hey, if you can buy only, okay, that's interesting uh, for what it is. So there's going to be a lot to talk about, a lot to do in these markets, and each morning I cover it for you. If you're a serious ETF spider trader and you're bearish right now, I got to tell you, that's the way that you got to be looking at most of the markets. Well, then you might want to tune in and give this a try each day because at about nine each morning, I cover 40 markets. I rotate these folks. This just gives you an idea of what some of them are. But Saturdays, I look and I do a weekly chart. So I'll take the ETFs and rather than a, uh, the daily look, I'm giving the longer term trader. I'll come out with bonus videos from time to time as well, which I do on my, what we call my special reports. I'm a seasoned guy. Been around this my whole life. Uh, got 50 years of charting experience. It actually goes back further. I, I actually went to a high school, believe it or not, with Hillary Clinton. It's hard to believe. And I was, of course, on the uh, finance club and all those type of things and doing charting when I was very, very young. Fell in love with it. I think I was doing charting at the time I was about 14, 15 years old. So I've done it most of my life. And I'll give you the ideas and the tidbits that I learned. How do you find it? Simple. All you need to do is take your per cursor right now, move it up here, hit the icon, it'll show you everything you need. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow.